Welcome back to Microbiology Lab. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to do a little bit of compare and contrast between two techniques that are used to uh, obtain small isolated colonies. And those techniques are streaking for isolation and then doing what are called spread plates. And with the spread plates, we'll actually do a, a short calculation where we can determine the number of colony forming units in the original inoculum. So we'll get to that towards the end of the video. So first I want to talk about streaking for isolation. So here is a plate that's actually lit up via fluorescence so you can actually see everything very well. Um, this is actually what's called a streak plate. All right? and I'm not going to go over the actual technique for that in this video. If you're interested in that, um, I have a link right here. Um, this link will be provided in the description of the video where I actually demonstrate how you actually uh, make this streak plate. But when you have a, a plate where you have done the technique streaking for isolation, you get a characteristic pattern on the plate, okay, if you do it correctly. Um, you actually will have the bacterial colonies very concentrated um, over here, let's say. Notice that there's no small isolated colonies. It just like, looks like a giant blur of these white colonies. And as you go, at least in this case, uh, clockwise, the colonies are getting more and more dilute. Okay, Where over here, it just looks like you took a brush stroke with a paintbrush with white paint. And over here, we actually have what are called small isolated colonies. Okay. And the whole goal of this is to create those small isolated colonies, which are just these white dots or whatever color the colony is. Okay? The reason we want to generate small isolated colonies is because if we were to do follow-up experiments where we were to, we were to use uh, the species that we put on this plate, a small isolated colony is more guaranteed to be a pure species. Okay? There's always a risk that you got some contamination. Okay? Always a risk. Um, so if you had a couple of species in here, you're more likely to have two species combined in this blur over here on the right than you are in a small isolated colony. The small isolated colony is more likely to be a single species. So other than being able to identify what are small isolated colonies on a plate, there are two major things I want to discuss about the technique streaking for isolation. Um, one, it's a means of mechanical dilution. So notice over here we have very concentrated bacterial colonies, but these are obviously over here very dilute because they're small and isolated. Okay? And the way that the dilution is done is purely mechanical. It's actually done once you put the bacteria on the plate, and then you're actually diluting simply with your technique with your inoculating loop. Okay? So that's the first thing I want to discuss. But the second thing that's important is also the appearance of the plate. Um, when you have a streak plate, you do have this important characteristic pattern where it's concentrated on one part and then it gets decreasingly concentrated or increasingly dilute as you go a certain direction around the plate. And then at some point you theoretically should have some small isolated colonies. And I recommend that you go watch the video on the technique, but what I'm going to focus on here is actually the spread plates. Here I'm actually going to go over how you actually make the spread plates, and then we'll do that calculation of determining colony forming units. So when you have spread plates, you'll start with what's called your original inoculum. This is basically your stock of bacteria. In this case, it's going to be in a broth. Okay, uh, This is your original. If you were to plate this on a spread plate, you would not have any small isolated colonies. The entire plate would probably be just coated, loaded in bacteria. It would just look like one giant colony, and that's not really any use to us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do what are called serial dilutions. And these are dilutions that are not mechanical. These are dilutions done prior to plating the bacteria. Whereas the dilutions in the streaking for isolation method are done already on the plate and are therefore mechanical dilutions. So here's how we actually do these dilutions for spread plates. What we do is we take the original inoculum, which is going to be a broth, and we're going to take one milliliter of that, and we're going to put that in this tube. Now, one milliliter re in reality would come up to about right here. Okay, But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it with nine milliliters more of just the broth itself. Okay, Not the stock broth, but just regular TSB, triptych soy broth. Okay, That's going to bring the final volume to 10 milliliters because I'm adding 1 milliliter of the original stock of bacteria and then 9 milliliters of blank TSB. Right? So let's think about this. 
If the total volume in here is now 10 milliliters, and I transferred only one milliliter of the original stock of bacteria, then only one-tenth of this broth right now is original bacteria. So its concentration is one-tenth the original, right? It's only one-tenth because it's one part bacteria and ten parts total, okay? So one-tenth the original concentration. Now notice if I were to plate this solution right here, there would still be way too much bacteria on the plate. So that's not good. I need to do a bunch more dilutions. And I'm going to do them in the same way. I can now take one milliliter from this broth, transfer it into this new test tube. Again, it'll come up to about right here. And I'm now going to add nine more milliliters of just blank TSB broth, triptych soy broth. All right. That again brings the final volume to 10 milliliters. And now in the same way, this uh, solution is one-tenth the concentration of this one. But since this solution was one-tenth of the original, then this one is actually a total of one-hundredth of the original concentration because it's one-tenth times one-tenth, which is one one-hundredth. Now again, if I were to plate this, we still have a problem. We don't really have any significant amount of small isolated colonies. We still have this large blur here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep making serial dilutions in the exact same way. So I start with something that's one-tenth of the original, and then to one one-hundredth of the original, and then to one one-thousandth, and then to one ten-thousandth, and then to one one-hundred-thousandth, and theoretically I could keep going to one millionth. Generally there's no need to go beyond that. But notice, when I get to the one ten thousandth and one one hundred thousandth, these are the first plates that I have, or the only ones here, where all the colonies are small and isolated. If I look at the one to one thousand dilution, uh, there are probably some small isolated colonies, but there's still a lot of blur here uh, from colonies that are just so densely packed. So it's still too concentrated. But one over ten thousand, this is the first dilution that's going to give me a plate where everything is a small isolated colony. Okay? And so in theory, I would use this plate. Now, I could use this one over here, one in a hundred thousand, but there's a reason you wouldn't use this, and it's just because even though they're small and isolated, there's less of them. There's only four of them here, whereas there's actually, they've already counted 32 on this plate. So there's just more material on this plate. So it would make more sense to use this, okay? But that's how you make a spread plate. You make a bunch of serial dilutions, so a bunch of different solutions, and you plate each of them on a different TSA plate, tryptocase soy agar. And then, once they grow, you use the one, the first one, where they're all small and isolated. All right? Now, one thing I can do is I can determine how many colony forming units are in the original stock or in the original inoculum. Now remember, the original inoculum is just a broth. There's just a bunch of bacteria floating in solution, right? They're not actually colonies yet. They're only colonies once you plate them, all right? There's 32 colonies here, four colonies here, but they're not actually colonies until you plate them. While they're in the broth or the inoculum, they're only potential colonies. And so they're colony forming units. They'll eventually become colonies once you actually plate them. So they're a colony forming unit you could think of as a potential colony. Okay? It is not a colony yet because it's not plated. But uh, once you plate it, it'll become a colony. And we can actually calculate the number of colony forming units or CFUs in the original inoculum. And what we need to do that is we need to know the dilution factor and we need to know the number of colonies on the plate. So for example, in this previous one, uh, in this one we have 32 colonies on this plate. We know what the dilution factor is, it's one in 10,000. So in order to calculate the number of colony forming units in the original inoculum, what I do is I simply take the number of colonies, so 32, and multiply times the big number of the dilution factor. So it would be 32 times 10,000. And so when I multiply that, the numerically it would be 320,000, and then the units are going to be CFUs per milliliter. And so I have a formula down here that we can use. The number of colony forming units, that is in the original inoculum, is the number of colonies on the particular plate times the dilution factor. So let's look at an example right here. For this spread plate shown over here on the left, 
Calculate the number of CFUs per milliliter in the original inoculum if the dilution factor for the plate was 1 in 100,000. So we know the dilution factor, we're going to use the 100,000, but we need to know the number of colonies on this plate. So we just count them if we're not told. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's 10 colonies on that plate. The dilution factor is 100,000, so all we do is multiply 10 times 100,000. And when you multiply this out, you get 1 million, and then the units are colony-forming units per milliliter. Okay? And the reason it's per milliliter or per 1 milliliter is because, remember, from the original inoculum, we only took 1 milliliter. It's not of the whole thing, it's just of 1 milliliter of that. So we have to include that per mil in the units. All right, but that's the major calculation that you could be asked to do for the spread plates. Okay, the other thing that I want to point out is again the difference in the appearance of a spread plate versus a streak plate. Remember, the streak plate has this characteristic pattern where it's very dense or concentrated on one part of it, and then it grows more and more dilute as you go around until finally only one small region has small isolated colonies. However, in a spread plate, the entire thing should pretty much be homogeneous, where there's just small isolated colonies everywhere, assuming you get it diluted enough. Um, this is a really uh, simple example down here, where each one of these is just a small isolated colony. There's no one region that's very concentrated and then a small region is just dilute. No, the whole thing is homogeneous, okay? And that's how you tell the difference between a spread plate and a streak plate. And one thing you could be asked to do, other than this calculation on a quiz or an exam, is to differentiate between a streak plate and a spread plate based solely on the appearance of the plate, okay? So that's a very important skill to be able to do for our class. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully you understand the difference between spread plates and streaking for isolation or streak plates. And please go and watch the technique video where I discuss how we actually make the streak plate using streaking for isolation. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.